Hello and welcome. I'm going to describe to you what I'm doing now going f uh, forward. Uh, I've had last six months have been a bit of a waste of time, although it's been more on the advisory role. Going forward, I've got myself a position as a stock broker. Now, this is quite interesting and I'll tell you why. First of all, in the UK, in order to be a stockbroker, uh, I'm going to show you uh, the sort of qualifications that you need. So, share screen. So in the UK, to be a stockbroker, first of all, you've got to have uh, the two foundation models, okay? Those models are uh, UK regulation and professional integrity, uh, also along investment risk and uh, taxation, okay? Once you've got those, okay, uh, you then go on to choose and elect one particular additional module, a specialism if you if you like. Uh, I specialized in uh, securities uh, and uh, also uh, in addition to that in derivatives. I actually started my uh, studies actually with a um, uh, level three certificate in commodities. And back in those times, we were talking around 2005, okay, that was sufficient for you to be a broker. It was after the debacle of the 2008 uh, crash that they upgraded it where things had to be uh, a level four, okay? Uh, a level four was simply a little bit more intense and an additional module, which was the investment risk and taxation uh, module. Okay, so let me just end uh, the screen sharing element if I can stop screen share okay so what happened was uh, back in those days we took oh, some time back really I, I did there was a company which I applied for and I applied for it on a speculative basis uh, to, to become a stockbroker it was back in oh, it must have been around 2014 15 uh, when I'd got my first diploma and I applied but there were no jobs available and so therefore uh, I got you know, rejected. Now, interestingly enough, about two, coming up to three years now, um, uh, that same company advertised for another position, a stockbroken position, and I applied again. Uh, but at that time, I only had the derivatives uh, uh, diploma, uh, having traded futures. Uh, and that was my main thing of trading futures, obviously done a bit of spread betting and some CFDs. Uh, so uh, at that time, they said, well, look, you know, it is a stockbroking position and you do need to have, uh, you know, stockbroking qualifications as in securities. So because that opportunity was out there, I really sort of like sort of said, OK, I'll do that exam. I'll do the securities exam. And I went to do the exam and unfortunately, I actually failed it. Out of uh, 80 questions, you need 56 to pass and uh, I only got 50. Uh, now, I found it and, you know, aware that this job was still open, still available, and again, gave me sort of nod and a wink, as in, if I had that exam under my belt, that they would uh, look upon me lightly uh, as a candidate. I went out there and took that test again in two weeks' time, two weeks later. Uh, at that point, I took the exam, and unfortunately, I failed again. I got 54. So, not being too despondent, but at the same time having a lot of pressure. It was just before Christmas. Uh, I studied very hard uh, and sort of went over all my mistakes, took the exam a third time, and pff, my result was 50. I couldn't believe it. I think it was a question of a hyper intention. When you want something too much, you're actually preventing yourself from, from actually doing it and achieving it. So I did take some time out, uh, about six months out, and after that opportunity of the stockbroking uh, job had gone and completely buried, etc., I did take the exam again and ended up with uh, 64 uh, out of 80. Uh, so I smashed the pass rate, uh, but the position was no longer available. Now, after the uh, debacle with the uh, company, which I have recently just been working with, uh, I noticed that the same company, stockbroking company, was advertising again and uh, this time I resubmitted my uh, application, uh, proudly announcing that actually I've got uh, not one, but two diplomas, yeah? 
So having two diplomas uh, was more than uh, necessary. Uh, I applied for the position and had to speak to the uh, head of stockbroking trading and also the managing director. Uh, and yeah, fortunately enough, uh, they offered me a position, which I gladly accepted. Now, I'm very excited about this position, although it's a bit on and ominous and, you know, uh, and I'm excited because it is actually one of the first properly regulated positions which I will be doing. Previously, I had worked in a, a sort of regulated environment, albeit self-employed basis, but it wasn't really direct client interface. It was normally, say, one type product. It wasn't actually advice. So I wasn't given advice, it's just guidance, yeah? Um, whereas this is given a whole heap of advice, uh, typically looking at people's portfolios, uh, uh, constructing them, seeing if you can make them a bit more efficient, or it's uh, providing uh, 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 inside track to uh, IPOs, pre-IPOs, uh, initial public offerings, okay? Uh, and likewise, uh, sort of giving uh, discretionary advice or uh, just normal general advice uh, on stocks and shares. Now, one of the uh, drawbacks, if you like, is that because it's a regulated uh, position and I am in a regulated uh, uh, position uh, I've got to avoid any conflicts of interest and number one conflicts of interest obviously would be uh, trading uh, I am closely monitored uh, monitored in regards to my uh, trading on personal accounts for example the whole sort of raft of rules and regulations in which one can do personal account trading and uh, from what I've seen uh, it's it totally contrary to the way I actually trade and I need to have a talk about that because I don't actually myself trade individual stocks I'm not uh, so that's one thing uh, so for example uh, one of the uh, rule stipulations are that if you're going to make a trade you're going to need to hold it for a minimum of 30 days I mean god I mean for me uh, my background if you hold a stock for 30 minutes you, you are a long time investor so, but, you know, the rules is rules. We, we, we stick by the rules, okay? Uh, other elements, obviously, to avoid market abuse. Yeah, we don't want to uh, have market abuse. We avoid it. And so, yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Cease recording. So those are the elements. Now, the, the next thing uh, which you really got to pay attention to is bringing assets under management. Okay, uh, that is uh, bringing clients who are interested in trading the markets. We make our money on the spread on the commissions. Okay, uh, there's a lot of hours put in to the work. Okay, and so it's about going out there and prospecting. Uh, in actual, in the, the job brief, what they put in, they even actually said old school cold calling. Yep, uh, which is hardcore. Yeah, uh, Inspirations, obviously, is uh, the film The Pursuit of Happiness. Uh, definitely not Wolf of Wall Street. I hate that film. It's no example whatsoever, as far as I'm concerned, for uh, stockbroking. Yeah, uh, I'd rather look at um, uh, 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 Gardner. Yeah, I'd rather look at Gardner uh, and his view on stock stop broking yeah uh, so I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to bringing clients uh, under management and servicing those clients yeah servicing them well I think that have, coming from a, a trading background if you like really puts you in a strong position in which to relate to the clients who you're speaking with okay because you understand the psychology and the psychological roller coasters upon which they're going and you can stand aside objectively and give uh, advice uh, i'm fortunate in a way because i've traded under the last major uh, bust up which was a uh, 2008 i actually traded way back dot com uh, but that was a, a brief sort of trade but 2008 and this turbulent times uh, through the EU crisis, the, the UK crisis. So I'm confident that I'll bring a lot of uh, experience and uh, expertise to bear. So I'm very much looking forward uh, to uh, looking after and servicing my clients. This brilliant uh, jacket of mine, which I love and I bought with pride, um, 
I may not be, well, I won't be able to wear that and it'll, I'll look a bit odd if I'm on a trading floor, uh, not on a trading floor, on a broking floor uh, wearing this jacket because this is like a trader's jacket belonging to a pit. Uh, I will be in suit and tie, in a suit and tie. Uh, I'll give you a bit more details later on as to the role and uh, how I'm approaching the role. Uh, and that's that, really. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching.